who Dr. Keeley was and mm -hmm. what he was all about. What he was about, yeah. yeah. The, so the building um, doesn't exist anymore. Okay. You know where St. John's... Like Prairie St. John's? Prairie St. John's, uh, yeah. yes. Yeah. So this sat kind of at the end of the street where the where the dike is now. Sure. Okay. So the dike, they tore it down for the, to put the dike up. Then I uh, also learned that there were a, a couple others I haven't documented exactly the dates of their existence. Sure. I did find one, the Keeley Institute, oh. around 1900. And then the Keeley Institute that was curing, um, I believe, like drug and alcohol type things. Oh, okay. uh, drunkenness is a disease and can be cured. Okay. The drunkard is a sick man, not a criminal. Hmm. I think I can park right there. Yeah, it looks like there's no parking right there. Yeah, oh. so maybe oh. right here. Yeah. yeah. They demolished the dam. Yep, and then they put the dike, and that's what you'll see in a photograph that uh, okay. was given of the Keeley Institute that it was actually uh, flooded. So here we are. This used to be where the around where the Keeley Institute of Fargo used to be, near what is now Prairie St. John's. And this is another institution here in town, so you can get mental health issues treated here. And I think they do inpatient and outpatient. Yes, yes, they do. Yep. And a very fine place, very, very fine. Um, really great place to be treated. I know personally, I've been treated here. And that was the beginning of me finding out I was on the autism spectrum. Got it. Which probably wouldn't have happened at the Keeley Institute. Yeah, no. no, probably no. not. They treated me with gold. Double chloride of gold treatment? Wow. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whatever that is. Yes, but it was just like I read that. And then Steve at the Fargo Public Library had said that the Keeley Institute was yeah. probably a quackery. Is that one uh, uh, kind of suspect on being a quack operation? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure if he was actually here because when I was searching for this, I found other Keeley Institutes around the country. Okay. So I think he might have. This might have been a branch. Oh. Um, probably run by a quack. Oh. Yeah. Operated by quacks. With a bunch of stuff that had no. Yes. Just hearsay, yes. or experimentation. Experimentation, as you have been saying, which is scary. You know, yeah. you don't deserve to be cloistered or no. like hidden away or incarcerated yes. because people are uncomfortable uh -huh. with the expression of that particular illness or condition that you have. Uh -huh. I mean, it just it frustrates me <laughs> to know it. As it ought to. So ridiculous. Yes. And, and, that's... and it is terrifying. It's terrifying. They did these things. All right, they, yeah, this chloride or gold treatment because they didn't have anything else to do. And so, yes, they were experimenting, they were just trying. So, yes, there's good and bad in both of those, you know, because it's like, you don't know what the outcome's gonna I be. Know. That's why science matters so much, especially with some of these conditions, because you need, you need to know yes. what's gonna happen if you take some of these things long term. Yes. It's really gonna make you feel better. They're gonna help you with, you know, what they want to do. Yes. Quality of life, right? Quality of life is huge. Yes. People can still have a really beautiful, even rich life. Yes. Even with these conditions. I mean, it's basically the same as like any physical health. Like you have diabetes, you have to manage that. Okay. Yes. You still have a good life. Yes. Sure. Maybe you have schizophrenia and you have to live with science, you know, the positive symptoms of it. I tell people I'm, the, I'm on the autism spectrum and they're kind of like, so what? Yeah, you know? so and that's so where we're at now. You know, yeah. it's kind of like, so who cares? I'm, I, I'm, my hair's thinning. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, my foot hurts. <laughs> Every person's got something, you know. Yeah, we're still free. Yeah. We can stand here on a sunny day, you know, and we can, I was just saying, you know, that we can act like crazy people, yeah. you know, and people will probably just ride by on bicycles being like, oh, what's, mm -hmm. what's with them? Instead of at a certain time, oh, they need to be put away. Mm -hmm like right away, you know. Mm -hmm. Here we are in downtown Fargo, okay, uh, right in the middle of everything. And here I am talking about being on the autism spectrum. I'm talking about having Asperger's syndrome and look what's happening. Nothing. Like I'm not being, I'm not being persecuted. I'm not being bullied. I'm not being beaten up. I'm not being locked away or something like that, you know? And it's like, so it's a really great time for me right now because of all the work that's been done. You know, in, in the past, and yeah. we've been talking about that. We're almost there. There's still a lot of that. It really oh, depends yeah. on where you live, and yeah. I think what what your access to resources and money is. Yes. I think the more resources and money you have, the more you're going to be able to successfully navigate to the places that can help you, where I am afraid that a lot of people that 
are under-resourced and don't have money will get stuck in places that the quality of care isn't as good, it's questionable, um, etc. I'm just supposed to be so grateful. I'm just supposed to be so happy. Um, I hope that I am. You know, and what do you two think? You know, like Heather and Jordan? I'm gonna start with Jordan. Okay, Jordan, what do you think? I definitely think, think that it shouldn't be a privilege for you to be able to walk and that, sure. that history sucks, but at the same time, we can definitely appreciate it, even mm -hmm. though it kind of sucks, the circumstances. Like what I'm finding out, yes, with mental the history of mental health care here in Fargo, Moorhead, um, what I'm finding out is that yes, people were mistreated, also people were trying as hard as they could. You know, and that's why we can do what we're doing right now because they tried. Mm -hmm. you know? And there were advocates. I mean, yes. Without people advocating for rights for people who are living with mental health conditions and who are on the spectrum and had autism, like, we wouldn't have these rights. We wouldn't be protected by law. It's really sad yeah. you know, that that fight had to occur in the first place instead of, oh my gosh, you see the world this way or you think this way? And it's like, well, bring that to the table, yes. you know, yeah. and not lock the door, you know, and say, get this person out of here. And what gives me hope is that you as a young person are already thinking that way. Yeah. Like, how can we be more inclusive? We all, we all deserve the same rights. Yes. Whether people have an impairment, whether they're a different race, different religion, different belief system, different behavior, whether that's considered normal or yeah. not normal, I'm just like, oh, thank God, like, this is already on like, the radar and you're yes. talking about it. Yes. Right? Yeah, thank you. That's how it changes. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go have some candy. Yeah, you, the candy's really good. <laughs> That's great. Hi yeah. guys. Hi. Cool. Yep, so now I gotta actually <laughs> see you. Bye. <laughs> if you require something more, I, mean, I can scan them and get them to you. But... No, I do believe these will be fine. I mean, this is just so much. Yeah. I ought not to be greedy. Thank you so much. <laughs> sure. Thank you, thank yeah. you. So, I mean, if you want, you can look at the directories and see if there's more. Turn this off now. I mean, that's more than... Okay.